Okay, so just a quick introduction. I, I, I mentioned I'm Vani. I am the head of uh, I'm the head of engineering for SSEEK here, and uh, I came to the UW and to SSEEK after spending over twenty years working in the tech industry. I was part of many successful and failed product launches, and uh, uh, it's very interesting to me what we can do via software engineering in this scientific enterprise that is not driven by cutthroat commercial competition. And I think there's a lot of uh, value that software practices from some software industry can bring to this kind of an effort. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a socio-technical focus and I'm very excited to see what comes out of uh, today's workshop. Uh, there's a lot to be said about why engineering exists. This is one of my favorite, like something that I read recently in this, this book that just came out about the history of inventions, is, which, which is the reason engineering exists uh, is to work outside the limits of scientific understanding and break through beyond codified knowledge. Codified knowledge in, in this sense is not software code, but you know just systematic and documented knowledge that science establishes till it gets to the point of uncertainty. And then you need to establish some sort of engineering to get to that next point of uh, certainty in scientific understanding. Uh, this is something that we are experiencing here at SSEEK uh, as we launch the projects that uh, we have taken on. Uh, and it's been a very exciting time. Uh, I've been here for six months now. Uh, we have uh, some of the uh, SSEEK engineers in the room. Come on in, Cordero. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just to get this, 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 this was also something that was super interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, we, we recently started looking at leap seconds uh, and I'm not gonna try and explain what that is. You can ask Andy, but please make sure you have at least half an hour to hear his response. Uh, uh, but it, the, the summary is that a leap second is something that was invented to synchronize the atomic clock with the slow rotation of the earth. And over the last 50 years, there are 37 leap seconds that have been added to the atomic clock, uh, right? But I'll give you a minute to read both of these examples. And I want you to identify which one of these is the scientist and which one of these is the engineer or the examples. And the context on the right side is this was a speech to speech. Uh, this was the first time speech to speech translation was demonstrated. Uh, I see Dennis is nodding and smiling. This was in 2012 uh, at a conference um, in, uh, in Beijing. Any guesses? Which one is the scientist and which one is the engineer? Yes, Reid? I think the one on the right is the, the engineer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So th there's there's a big difference between what moves scientists. A long time ago, I was given the career advice that you should pick projects and you should take on work that really moves you, right? Like something something like this can move a scientist to tears, right? Twenty years working on trying to get rid of, you know, what what results in thirty seven seconds over fifty years is pretty significant type of focus, I would say. It's a pretty deep and significant kind of focus, uh, whereas engineers typically tend to work on bigger systems. They, uh, you know, they are very moved by something like speed and accuracy of, of, of a problem that they have solved via engineering tools. Um, so that's kind of, we are seeing this on a day-to-day -day basis here at SSEEK. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the background, uh, Anisa said I would talk about this and SSEEK, I feel, a little underqualified. There's so many more of my esteemed colleagues in the room who established this, who established SSEEK. I'm kind of the new kid on the block here, but this is directly from the web page. Uh, the Virtual Institute for Scientific Software is the launch of a network of scientific software engineering centers at several research universities. We have folks here from uh, Georgia Tech, uh, and then uh, uh, we have Paul Richmond from University of Cambridge on the, on the call, and uh, Hopkins. Do we have Hopkins here? We don't have Hopkins, sorry. Uh, so those are the other three centers in addition to UW. And uh, that is, uh, 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 SSEEK is the one uh, that we are part of, which is which is UW. This is the SSEEK team so far. Uh, several of these engineers are in the room, part of this workshop today. 
Uh, Anissa is, is uh, our expert on socio-technical uh, aspect. We have an under we, we are establishing a student program. We have one undergrad student right now, uh, and Maria is helping us with our hiring, which has been a significant focus for us. Uh, this is a list of active projects that we are working on right now. I'm not going to explain what these projects are, but feel free to during the breaks talk to you know the. Can you just raise your hands, Don Cordero and Carlos? Uh, these are engineers who are working on these projects. It's super fun, uh, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, you know uh, they are really digging in deep because it is impossible to co constantly engage and uh, understand the depth of domain that is required in order to successfully execute on the engineering aspect of each of these projects. The last one there is a is an engineer who's going to join us in May, uh, but other than that, the others are here in the room. Uh, this is a day in the life of us as Seek software engineer. And this was, uh, I, I checked with them before I, I created this slide. So this is not what I think they are doing. This is actually what they're doing. And these days it's mostly about gathering requirements and uh, you know establishing uh, what the, uh, DevOps and all that stuff. We are noticing that even engaging with PIs and establishing establishing some basic structure for how software infrastructure is set up in their research lab is quite helpful to them. Uh, but eventually, we are expecting that we'll be really in the thick of projects and mostly just be focusing on writing code, reviewing code. And we have also started doing some community efforts, such as uh, you know setting up community meetups and so on. Uh, that is my last slide. We do have a couple of minutes for questions, if anyone has. If not, then I can, uh, you know, we, we can move on to the next section. Of, Anissa, do you want to? 